If you want to speak to these so many people, you would feel the need to prepare very well. You, know, you need to go across all your wordings, you want to be sure you're politically correct. Well, I'm not really very well prepared because this happens in the midst of everything. But I quickly told myself that there's just one thing I have to do, which is to search myself and tell you things that some of my friends during interaction would like to say, which also meet things I would have to say as well, because I discovered that our needs, our fears all lines up. There's not so much difference. So it's kind of easier. I have just three key messages to send to all of you. And the first is that engaging young people in terms of meaningful engagement is not negotiable when we talk about sustainable future. And the second is that, what is like a question, the second point. What about those people whose resources are at risk and whose environment we plunder? And the third point is that we need to start communicating our messages to the 21st century society. They are not hearing us. It's like we've been talking so much to ourselves. This is a very big gathering, and it's going to be nice to discover that we are not just here, but others are here with us. But they can't come, because this place is far, and the overall cost implication is not what they could cover. Before I go much more into details, I will tell you a short story about myself. I'm a Nigerian. I grew up in southwest of Nigeria. It's called Ibad. At some point, that is the biggest, one of the biggest cities in Africa. It's not that I grew up seeing trees all around. It's not because nature abound. I studied forestry because I wanted to be different. I wanted to do something that is not similar to what everybody else wants to do. I have no idea what I was getting into. I just saw the course of study and I said, oh yeah, this looks good. At least I stand apart. But when I started, I saw that the future is kind of bleak because I'm not sure what the future says. I don't know what I'll do tomorrow. There are so many people like me here today. Some started forestry because you know, they, 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 have, they live with nature. Some started because they, they, they are like second fiddle. They, 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 they made some entry exams into some universities and they are not, you know, they didn't meet the cut off mark, then they just you know, drop off, they are kind of sieved off into other courses of study. One thing we all have in common, is that we have our fears, we have our needs, we have our concern, and we have expectations too. At some point in time, we want to be able to look at the future and say that there were people before us, and those who were before us knew what they were doing. That in pursuit of sustainable solutions, they availed themselves an honest account of the present. They listened to others. They ask questions, why? Why are things the way they are? And they try as much as possible to communicate outcomes to the outside community, to the society, the society where we find ourselves. When I say we need to ask why, we need to ask why those who are forestry dependent communities, why they are not able to raise their voice or what restriction they face. We need to ask why young people are not studying forestry or why they don't want to study forestry or why they don't want to stay in the sector. We need to ask why young kids don't have, I want to be a forester on their preferred ambition list. It's not because they are doing as they are told. It's because they cannot imagine it. They can imagine being a doctor, they saw comic books, they, they watch cartoon, they watch TV. So it's imbibed, it's inherent in their brain and they can simply say even what they don't fully understand. What about we start listening more? What about we start asking why? 
I will give you a specific case study of illegal logging. You know, why people actually carry on with illegal logging is because most of these people don't attach themselves to the goals we have. You know, for every just cause, everyone who to align the, themselves with the goal, identify with the process of achieving the goal, and perhaps they will feel responsible for the outcome. What about we start communicating differently in the 21st century? What about scientists, you start sharing your ideas, not just with science direct. The, the society don't read science direct, they don't read journals. The society watches TV, society Facebook. What about we have people in our midst who can answer just one question? How can we communicate forestry to the society such that 60 years old understand, 20 years old, want to know more, and five years old get excited. Things will not get better until we all actually come together to make it happen. It's not the function of some of us to solve the problem. It's a problem that belongs to all of us, and we all have to solve it together. You know, I look forward to a, a, a time when all of us, there's no longer a kind of a divide between us and the society, and here are where people are able to explain what we do, are understanding our point. A time when young kids, even if they can't define forestry, they can say what we stand for and what we do. Today, young people, we give you the opportunity to listen to them, to share insights, and to have an intergenerational dialogue. It's going to be nice to have you around, and we hope you can join us. Thank you very much.